right guys, it's a little different. Yesterday was almost 90, we were in shorts, no shirt, and today I got long sleeve, sweatshirt. Um, but we are all res ready to raise these 80 foot long walls. We're gonna do this side in three lifts. Uh, the other side has three 16 foot wide doors, so it's gonna be probably four. We'll just raise those door units as one. But we have all of our bracing laid out, all of our bolts, everything's ready to rock and roll. So we're gonna start with this uh, section wall here that's got four columns. It's really well balanced. When you're thinking about how much should I raise at once, if it's a well balanced wall, you can lift quite a bit. Um, if it's off balance, you're probably gonna to wanna to downsize what you lift. That's what I found. So we're gonna start with this. Um, once we get both sides lifted, braced, we'll build an end wall. look a lot bigger up in the air than they do laying on the ground. All right. Belt on. Yep. That's good for now, Jake. Yep. How was that? That's good. Now the top ones you can just tighten. Okay. And I'm good. I'm good on that one too. Now we'll put this top bolt in first suck it together and then tighten and then when we do that bottom one we'll back those out then suck it in and then put them back in sound good let's just work our way across here
you have it. Alright, so this is our corner column and our truss is going to get nailed into this column on the end, a space nailed. So we put this little block in here, put a little spacer and angle a board out so when we set this truss we have a little sleeve to set it in. It just keeps that truss from popping out when you get it into place and it's a lot easier doing this on the ground than up.
Got the two 80 foot side walls all framed up, ready to go. Now we're doing our first end wall. We have all the columns laid out, cut, and we're laying out all of our girts. And when I do this, um, I'll show you here kind of in better detail how I lay this out, but I just run one screw into each one as I work across this wall, squaring it. That way, if I need to change something, I can just pop that screw out and adjust whatever I, I need to. Um, it usually works out pretty good, and I don't have to change anything, but I guarantee you if I nail it, then I'm gonna have to change something. So even though it takes a little extra time, this is how I do it and it works out good. So I'll show you how I start squaring the first column and how I work across. So in this particular case, this is a 60 foot end wall. Um, so what I'll do is I'll get all my columns marked out and cut uh, to the height that I need them and get them laid out in the columns. And then I will secure them in these brackets with screws on each side so they don't move. That is the height that I needed to raise this footing. And so I make, I line all those up at the bottom, screw them in where I want them so they don't move. I know that my side wall is all straight. So I'll start out, grab a measurement from the outside edge to outside edge. And I'll work that measurement up the side, matching it so I know this is straight. Then I will do the same thing from the side wall to the second one. And then I'll start screwing in my boards as I work across. Um, these will move a little bit until you get several of them locked together. So you just have to keep checking. And then I just keep building across, matching my measurement from uh, edge of column to edge of column. And I keep checking um, back to the side wall to make sure I'm staying consistent. And I'll do that all the way across. And if I did my job right, when I take the measurements from that side wall to my first column, it should match up, which it did in this case. So now that I have this all screwed together, um, I come up with a plan on how I wanna lift this. And there's seven columns in this wall. So I'm gonna take these three middle ones that way it's a balanced wall that I'll be raising and I'll raise that and then I'll raise these two end ones separately. What I'm gonna do now is we have all of our measurements for these girts that go all the way out there. I will nail these all on, but these short ones I'll leave off and just pile up. When they just are only hooked to one column, they get kind of wobbly, so I just leave those until we get the wall up. So I'll get all these cut, nailed on, and then we'll start lifting. So one thing to think about is when you want to take your measurements at the bottom of the columns, um, because you know those are true and those are accurate. So if you do that and you match these all the way across, when you raise this wall and then you match your girts up to this column, it should perfectly straighten that. And your overall measurement, 60 foot at the bottom, should match at the top. Um, hopefully that makes sense. So one thing I wanna talk about, which can get confusing, is what do you do if these columns aren't perfectly straight, which they never are? Um, if you look down this one, looks pretty straight. I know I had a couple that kinda of had but if you look down this one, it's pretty straight, and then right there, it's kind of got a, it's got a little bit, kind of a of a U to it. So the most important thing is that you want this thing to be plumb from the bottom to the top. So when I measure off this wall up here where my truss sits, I want that to match down there at the column. And then if you're off an eighth or something as you go down there, it's gonna be just fine. So that's how I do it. I'll make sure that the bottom of my column, the measurement from that corner to the bottom of this one matches the top where my truss sits over to that uh, column. That way I know overall this column is uh, running plumb and square to each uh, sidewall. Hopefully that makes sense. But these are never 
hardly ever perfectly straight and you'll you know you'll get a little variance through the middle so just make sure the top and the bottom is what is really really important and a lot of times if you fasten the top girt and the bottom girt you can sometimes kind of maneuver these posts um, almost to a perfect position some of them you can't but a lot of them you can So I just placed my last girts that extend out here past the columns. And this is something you need to uh, take into consideration. If you look over here, I have all this material stacked here, so I can't build my wall out here, which I do sometimes if I have a nice clear space because you don't run into the problem I'm about to talk about. So you can see these extend past the wall so when we lift this wall, it's going to hit here. So we have to have room to be able to pivot it. And so I line the girts that I have extend to the wall. I make sure they're not going to hit this post or you won't be able to put them on. If I would have had this one come out here, it would hit right here. And then we wouldn't have even been able to put it on and get the wall square. So that's just something to take into consideration when you're building. I want to put Some builders gonna get on here and be like, you should just nail them right away. My answer to that is I guess I'm just not that good. <laughs> Alright guys, we got the uh, big uh, nailer out. I call it LaBronda. But anyway, um, so we don't end up nailing the wrong ones. I go through and leave the screw up just a little bit. And we know if there's a screw up, we don't nail that. So Jake will go through, nail all those. He can nail this, but he can't nail this one because this girt has to go with the middle three posts. So that's what I do. I'll go through and lift up the screws that I don't want nailed. That way there's no miscommunication and uh, no mistakes.
Alright guys, that's gonna be a wrap on lifting up these walls, getting them plumb, putting our end wall in. We're gonna start uh, trusses next week. We appreciate you guys watching. If you guys are gonna build a post frame home or building on your own, we have a Patreon and we just uploaded a detailed video on in-floor radiant heat. So if that's something you're gonna do, check it out. It's a build uh, group membership. It's uh, every month we go over a different topic in depth. We answer your questions. It's a really good resource. So check that out and thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next video.